Hello, my wonderful and lovely humans. So uh, today we are going to be learning about membrane transport, okay? So you guys should have gotten a three-page foldable. Let me show you how to um, go ahead and set that up first. So you guys should have picked up pages one. Oh, sorry, wrong side. <laughs> page one, uh, you guys should have picked up page two and you should have picked up page three here, okay? And if you pay attention to pages one and three, um, you'll see here on the side, it says to glue page two onto here. So you're simply just going to kind of stick them here, okay? And you should get something that ends up looking like this, okay? Now, um, this is intended to fit in your notebook, so that means you're gonna have to fold it, okay? And honestly, the easiest way to fold it is to fold it along those lines uh that are dotted right here okay so if you want to pre-fold before you know you glue it together that's fine if you want to wait until after you glued it that's also fine i mean you do you babe okay just uh make sure you have these notes okay all right um so hopefully you guys would have already finished that up so i'm just gonna go ahead and get into it if not you can pause the video and give yourself a shot to get caught up to that uh section but i actually let me flip my camera here. I've actually already prepared one for you. Um, so this is actually from my class from last year. Um, but as you can see, I have pretty extensively colored this. Now, um, if you're gonna color this, I'm not gonna make this a requirement. If you're gonna color this, okay, I will give you quite a bit of extra credit, probably a good amount. Let's just say a good amount, okay? And you guys know that you can trust me, so. I promise. Okay. All right. But um, anyways, I would like to point out the fact that these right here, these structures are all the same color and they are all the same color for very good reason. Okay. Um, these structures over here also very same color. So all I'm asking you to is if you guys decide to color this, make sure you're staying consistent with colors and with the different various aspects of it. Okay. And you guys will see what I mean. I think you should fill this out before you even try coloring it. So let's go ahead and get into it. So what is membrane transport? Um, so membranes are going to exist on our cells. Um, technically they exist on our skin too. Like there's, this is a membrane. Um, this is a thick membrane that is meant for protection. And that is basically what a membrane is for. It is there for protection. But of course, as cells, uh, cells require certain things in order to live, they're living things, right? Um, so they're gonna require food, they're gonna require uh, water, uh, oxygen, all these things, right? Point is, uh, we need to have a way, even though we, we require protection, we need to have a way to allow those things to come in. So we're going to talk about the different methods, um, the different ways that cells are able to go ahead and get the items that they need from their environment, okay? So the first thing I need you guys to know about membrane transport is that this is also going to be known as a lipid bilayer. This membrane is known as a lipid bilayer. And if you guys pay attention to these structures here, okay, and I'm going to zoom in now. If you guys pay attention to these structures here, um, you guys will see that there are two sides to this. And hopefully you can see there's kind of a split here. I guess I'm going to bump down here because maybe you can see it better. But there's definitely a, a definition here. There's two layers to this, okay? And if we look at that bilayer thing, okay, bi means two. Uh, think bicycle, okay? And then layer, again, we know what a layer is, right? It means something stacked on top of another. So over here, what we have is a two layer thing made out of lipids. And what do we know a lipid is? It's one of our, say it, say it kids, say it. Okay, I'm really hoping you guys did it because like by now you guys should know like I'm weird and I want you to say it even when like you're not here. Anyways, point is this lipid is one of our macromolecules and now you're going to find out why lipids specifically are so important. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. We are going to look, oops, <laughs> awkward. Okay, <laughs> I don't want you guys to get too far ahead of yourself. Um, I want to show you guys what part of this thing we are at. Uh, so this is page one. Um, I'm over here on the top left corner, okay? So let's take a look, a closer look. Um, all right, so I am going to go kind of quickly, but if you guys want to pause at the end of this section, you can do so, okay? 
So the first thing that we need to understand is a thing called a concentration gradient. Um, actually, you know what? We're, we're gonna, we'll just, don't worry about that. I should have covered that earlier. You know what? Let me call it, cover that. We'll come back to that now that I think about it. Guys, I like literally didn't even look at this. <laughs> I just kind of like got it out and was like, let's go. I did this last year. I can do it again this year. Well, we'll come back to it. Okay, promise. All right, anyways, the first thing we need to talk about, like I said, things need to be able to come in and out of the cell. So the first method that we have for things to come in and out of the cell is called passive transport. Now, passive transport, if we kind of break that word up, first of all, to transport something means to take something from one place to another, but passively, right? Think about passive versus active aggression, right? If I'm passive aggressive, maybe I'm kind of giving you like a backhanded compliment, Versus if I'm actively aggressive, like I'm, I'm, you know, putting up, putting up my fists, right? Like ready to fight. Okay. So passive transport, just like passive aggressiveness, like isn't actually going to require action. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to use this concentration gradient thing. And we're going to be able to go from a high concentration to a low concentration. Okay. And now I will go ahead and reveal that definition. So concentration gradient is going to be the natural movement of substances from high to low concentration. Okay. So I want you guys to copy these two things. All right. Now there, don't worry. Like I said, I promise I will, I will give you a chance to pause at the end and make sure that you guys can copy this down. So I'm going to continue. But anyways, there are three ways that we can do passive transport um, by taking advantage of that high to low concentration. Um, one of these first ways is via diffusion. And diffusion is going to be some natural movement across the lipid bilayer. So if you guys look at these individual structures here, you're going to see that it looks like this. Each one of these is one lipid. Um, when you stack them together next to each other, right, that's how lipids kind of like to lay or I guess exist, um, they, they stack on top of each other and that's what makes them carry so much energy and what makes them such a great way to uh, store energy for when we need it. Uh, so anyways, we are able to stack these up, right? And again, bilayer is gonna refer to the two layers that exist here, okay? So this diffusion of movement, right? We're gonna go from high concentration and as you can see, there's so many more particles up here, okay? versus down here where there's so few particles. So what's gonna, what is the natural progression of things? Because we have a concentration gradient and we have a high concentration here and a low concentration here, right? We said that this is going to naturally move across this way. And that's why this arrow has been drawn. And please draw that arrow, okay? All right, the second way that we can do passive transport is via osmosis. And osmosis is gonna be very specific to water. Okay. And yes, write it, write everything. Okay. So, um, this is going to be the movement of water from low to high concentration. Okay. So if you look at these structures, I'm pretty sure they were referring to like water. So if you look here, here's the oxygen, here's the two hydrogens. Um, and it's a bent structure. Um, if you write out the formula, this is what H2O looks like. This is what water looks like. Um, so anyways, that's, I guess a little bit extra, but if you count how many, uh, like little molecules you have here of water, one, two, three, four, five, that. Anyways, if you count how many little water molecules you have up here versus down here, I mean, there's a clear difference that there is so much over here, right? But if you look at these little dots here, okay, I think this is supposed to mean something more like this. Um, but if you look at these dots, right? Typically, you would think that the dots would be moving this way, right? But because we're talking about osmosis and because osmosis is specific to water and water alone, um, the water is what's going to end up moving. So instead of the solute or these little particles over here, the water is going to move across the, the lipid bilayer, okay? All right, let's talk about the third form of passive transport. And this is going to be facilitated diffusion. Um, so this is going to be a method where we actually use proteins to transport things across our lipid bilayer. Um, so these proteins are kind of embedded within the, the, uh, the lipid bilayer. Um, and basically what's going to happen is that these proteins are 
built a certain way and it only allows for a certain shape or a certain size or whatever to fit through it. So only if you are the right size, right shape, whatever, um, is it going to allow you to pass through? Okay. Now this is a different way. And basically it's going to go ahead and like accept the right shape or whatever. And if it finds it, then it goes ahead and it kind of clamps shut and it lets it go. Like it, it's kind of like a, this kind of movement, right? Okay. So, um, still we're using these proteins that are already lead, uh, that are already kind of spread throughout the bilayer and we are taking advantage of this high to low concentration gradient, the natural pull. Um, but, uh, we are using the structures embedded within the layer. Okay. So proteins, if you guys remember is one more of our, what I'm really hoping you guys said macromolecules. So this is our, uh, this is another type of our macromolecule. And honestly, we spent so much more time on proteins. So I hope you guys know it. All right, so this would be the moment. If you guys need to pause the video, you can pause the video and finish copying whatever you need to, okay? All right, so if you, hopefully you guys have all this uh, copy down. If not, you know, go back, pause the video. Uh, but we're going to move back over here towards the title and we're going to continue to move right. And we are going to look at this section here in yellow. And again, like I said, I'm going to kind of move a little quick here. Uh, so first of all, we have active transport. Um, so remember how I said over here, passive transport, like passive aggressive versus active aggressive, right? Passive aggressive meant not really using energy to do it. Well, guess what? Active aggressive, active transport is going to refer to actually requiring energy to do this. Um, so this, we're going to require energy because we're going to be moving against our, our concentration gradient. Okay. And remember the concentrating, the concentration gradient always wants to go from low to high, but with this, what we're actually going to want to do is go from high to low. So it's actually opposite. And that's why we're going to have to put some energy into it because that's not the natural movement of things. Does that make sense? Hope so. Okay. Uh, now we have two, two versions of active transport. The first is molecular active transport. Uh, molecular active transport is going to use ATP energy. And I don't know if you guys remember, but ATP energy is created uh, during the process of, oh, geez, is it photosynthesis or cellular respiration? I can't think off the top of my head. I want to say it's photosynthesis, ATP energy to move substances against the concentration gradient. So remember the concentration gradient automatically happens, right? That's just the natural movement of things. But now we're using energy to go against it. Now there's this other way we can do that. And this other way is called bulk transport. So this is going to be the movement of large quantities in or out with the use of vesicles. And when I think vesicles, I like to think of a vehicle. Okay. So let me actually write that. Vesicles think vehicle. And when you guys think vehicle, I think of a little car, right? And guess what? Let me, okay. So if you need to pause the video, this would be the time. All right. But getting back to this whole vehicle thing. Okay. Um, we're going to take a look over here now on page three, and we're looking at exocytosis and endocytosis. So if you guys see these little uh, bubbles, okay, that's what I'm talking about when I say vehicle, right? Because what's going to happen is, okay, so let's let's start with exocytosis. So when you say exocytosis, I want you to specifically pay attention to that exo part because it sounds a lot like exit. So that means that materials are being removed from the cell, okay? So what's gonna happen here is that the membrane, and guys, this is still the same membrane that we were talking about over here. It's just, you know, a larger scale maybe. This is more microscopic over here versus this one. Um, so anyways, we're going to take our membrane and we are going to basically make kind of like this vesicle. It's a vehicle. It's like a, a bubble from the membrane, right? We're going to create a bubble and we're going to form around whatever materials it is that we're trying to remove from uh, wherever it is we are. Um, so because we're exiting the cell, right, it should be getting kicked out. So I believe this, whoops bell rang. Sorry guys, that, that is 
That is the bell in the video, not your bell. Sorry, guys. Okay, but anyways, um, like I said, there's a vesicle here. Um, so exocytosis, contents are going to be removed from the cell. Over here, an endocytosis, right? So endocytosis versus exocytosis. Endocytosis, think enter. Um, in endocytosis, contents are brought into the cell. So we're going to bring all these little molecules or whatever it is that we are wanting to bring from outside, and we're going to bring them in. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay, if you need to pause the video because I'm going to shift around again. All righty. Uh, so now we are going to bump down here to the bottom of the page and we're just following this endocytosis line here because guess what? There are three types of endocytosis. The first is known as receptor mediated endocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis is going to move certain substances into the cell, right? Endocytosis again, enter. Um, so let's pretend out here is the external. Let's pretend in here is the internal. So as you can see, the substances that we want are all in here, and they're only going to take a specific shape or size or form or whatever, because if you look at the other kind, right, the other option would be that little bubble there. Well, that little bubble is not going to lodge itself into here, just like these stars fit. So you need to have the right shape in order to fit here. So receptor, you have to have the right receptor, and it is mediated, meaning that it is like kind of being watched, I suppose. And again, endocytosis is gonna to refer to being brought in, okay? All right, the next version is phagocytosis. And phagocytosis, if you translate it, is called cell eating and it's gonna move solids in. And the reason it's called cell eating is because they are gonna take these huge things, like these uh, solid pieces, right? Like think of like a, a bite, of food, it's going to take a bite of food and it's going to bring it inside to the cell. And the third version of endocytosis is going to be penocytosis. And penocytosis, think P, cell drinking, right? Moves liquids in. So specifically only liquids. Okay. And I'm not sure like why stars and circles. But anyways, I guess these must be liquid substances. Um, so over here we have solids, which is phagocytosis. Over here we have penocytosis, which think liquids, okay? And I, when I hear penocytosis, I think going pee, right? Um, okay, all right. So if you need to go ahead and pause the video, copy whatever it is you need to. All righty. And just one more time, I'm going to be moving this. So I'm going to follow here so that hopefully you don't get lost. Now we're at the top of the page. We're going to move back over here towards active transport. And now we're going to follow this line from molecular active transport and all the way down here. So now we're at the bottom of the first page again. Okay. Now over here, molecular active transport, just a quick reminder, is going to use energy to move substances against our concentration gradient. And the concentration gradient is what we would normally want to happen uh, or what is going to normally occur. Um, so let's talk about those two different things, okay? So here we are. We have two different versions. We have primary active transport and secondary active transport. Primary active transport is going to use ATP energy to pump substances against concentration gradient. So again, we have these little um, uh, proteins. Again, not your bell, guys. Sorry, not your bell. Um, this is my bell, and don't worry about it. Okay. Anyways, uh, there are proteins here laced without the lipid bilayer, and those proteins, again, are very specific to what they are allowing in or out. Um, so this is something that's pretty famous. It's called the sodium potassium pump. So Na plus is sodium, K is potassium. Um, and both of these are positive, right? So what do we know about positives and negatives? Do they attract each other or do they repel each other? Positives and negatives are going to attract each other. They're gonna wanna like, boom, like magnets, right? Um, so uh if we're moving against the concentration gradient, right, we're doing the exact opposite of what it typically would want us to do. So it is going to be more positively charged here and because it's trying to move these substances in. Does that kind of make sense? So as you can see, it's going to uh, do basically the opposite. 
Oh, again, not your bell. Sorry, guys, not your bell. It's my bell, not yours. I'm just late and I'm like totally kicking my sec first hour outside. Okay, anyways, uh, secondary active transport is gonna use ATP that's generated by concentration gradient during primary active transport. Um, so primary active transport over here, because uh, we are simply only taking one ATP. So ATP, I want you to think it has three Ps, but ADP over here, I want you to think has two Ps. So if you guys look here, ATP is gonna drop off a P here because the P is gonna power uh, the protein and it's gonna become ADP because now it's down a P, okay? Well, anyways, over here, because we still have a little bit of energy left, we're going to take that ATP, or sorry, ADP, should say ADP, sorry guys, ADP that is generated by the concentration gradient during active transport um, over here from step eight. And we're going to do the same thing, except with different proteins, okay? So if you guys need to, go ahead and pause the video, copy whatever it is you need to, but please also make sure that you are uh, copying these notes as well. Okay. All righty. So now that we are all done, I got to go let my first hour in. <laughs> and if you're first hour listening to this, sorry guys. Sorry. I was just trying to make sure you guys had what you needed. Okay. Well, uh, ooh, let me flip my video. That's all I got for you guys today. Um, okay. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. Bye.